Hi, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6. We are doing a Star Trek Discovery after review show. We just got through watching Season 2, Episode 8, If Memory Serves. And wow, I think this is the best episode of the season so far. I loved it. Ta Very we good. We knew uh, last week Talos 4 was going, to be in the, was going to be in this. So that, to me, that was amazingly <laughs> exciting. I just wish that there was more... More Talos for more, more Talosians. Good. I wanted a little bit more. What did you guys think of the Talosians? What they, did you think? I they thought they were great. great. Yeah, did not disappoint. I like the updated sort of yeah, imagining it, that of what totally they like. worked. Yeah, it did. I liked. I, I was a little concerned because I thought they were going to be all guys, and uh, one of the one of the defining characteristics of the Talosians androgynous. was they, how they were androgynous and they used women. They, they, were, they were all women yeah. in, in costume. They, so there were some w clear women in, uh, in makeup, and that was good. That was great. One thing. I didn't like a little bit. The nose ridge went up and all the way up to the top of their head. The fine nose ridge, this kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought it was, it was okay. Little, it was a little like ah, I kind of kept staring at it. I didn't want to stare. At oh. it. I didn't want to stare. At it. it didn't maybe, bother me. They got to look alien. The aliens got to look I alien. Got, I, got, I know. What you, I know what you're saying. Just a little picky thing, but it, it was wonderful. I, and I just wanted more. I wanted to see an entire episode on that plan. I want, but it was still very re rewarding. And, and fun, oh, it's such a great idea. You know when they were in the meeting and somebody mm -hmm. said, let's have them go to Talos 4. Everyone's like, yes, we gotta do this. <laughs> well, well, it was Pike, you know, like yeah. Pike's yes, connection there is, is profound. And I like the fact that they extended Pike's relationship with Vina. Like, he really cares yeah. about Vina. Yeah, like, they, you know, there's a connection there, which, which makes the menagerie, um, yeah. well, the, the, uh, the, the original series episode, The Cage, more in, meaningful that Pike right. ends up with being at the end. Right. He really loved her. He really had feelings for her. Yep. You know? I like that. So I agree. I think this was the best episode. It had, it had profoundly strong uh, writing. The stakes were high. The character development was 100% was mm -hmm. there. You know, this was the first time that Spock's relationship with Michael didn't seem forced. Like, it actually felt like, yep, these two characters have a history. You yeah. know, all the other time, yeah, yeah. it felt like it was retconning. And I, even though this was pretty much retconning, it felt appropriate. Um, well, they, they, they definitely developed their backstory yeah. very well. You know why Michael you know, cut relationships with, with Spock to protect him, but she did it in a hurtful way, and then that kind of helped define Spock's character and right. Right. rejecting his human side and embracing his Vulcan logical hey, side. Hey, that was a poignant scene when when, yeah. uh, when they went through what, what she did to him and then yeah. their, their reactions, that was poignant. I mean, I've never been that you know that moved emotionally in for Discovery. It really yeah. was like, damn, that's powerful. And they're developing the Red Angel plot line. So we know now the Red Angel is trying to basically save the timeline that if right. things keep going the way they're going, every sentient planet in the galaxy is going to be destroyed. I kind of get a little eh when the stakes are that high. It's like, yeah. really, we've got to save yeah. the universe again. But okay. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I feel like we're, there's a, a lottery wheel, yeah. and they're like, and who is going to be the red angel? You know, like, because it, it now, could be. <laughs> it's, it's from a, the future. It's a human. It's a yeah. human in a, in a suit, so it could be anyone from the future. You know? Steve, when you said, you've got to save the universe, it reminds me, of course, Mr. Incredible. It's like, I just saved the universe. I just, you know, it's like the maid. I just cleaned up in here. Yeah. Can't we keep it clean for a little bit? <laughs> All right, so Love there were some really good moments in this episode. Um, first of all, from a uh, director and uh, cinematography point of view, it was very dreamy. The whole yeah. thing was lit yeah. in a dream state with a like a semi fisheye lens, which was a lot kinda, of lens flares. Yeah, it was cool, and it, it really did. Camera. It revolved around yeah. the Talosians, and it also, yeah. I think, in a sense, um, they were kind of expressing like Spock's frame of mind mm -hmm. in a way, like you know, it was all kind of maybe through his lens. Timey wimey. And uh, so I thought that was cool. In the beginning, I didn't understand it because it was markedly different. But then right. I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, this is, this is supposed to be kind of dreamy. Right. It's all illusions. I loved the black hole and, yeah. and that it was, <laughs> it was, their, that was their defense. Yep. And, and it was also kind of like Spock took it as a test. Like, you know, mm -hmm. you, you passed right. the test. How long, cool. how long did it take you to realize that it was, it was an illusion? Yeah, about a, a second. Nanosec yeah. A whole second. Yeah, a whole yeah. second. Um, and I was I, like, oh, oh, oh. You know, right. I was, yeah. And yeah, I right. love the, I love the idea that they use the modern conception of, 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 yeah. of what the black hole looks like with the, with the, it was very interesting. With the light, right? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. With, the, with the, uh, the light distortions, very cool. And so, all right, what we do we not know at this point? So the. 
They sent a probe right into the cloud. The probe comes back from the future, all jacked up, yeah. and it attacks the shuttle. They have to destroy it. They haven't been able to recover any pieces of it. So how did that happen? The Discovery now is on the LAM. Right, they have to run from Section 31 and the Federation, Wait, but why? I they, like that. I kind of like that. I like it. Though. It's good, but it's, yeah, it's a, it's a cloud. We've been there before, like the captain's going off script and the crew's with them. That's great. Yeah. But you would, then, but why? So the question is, they, they, so they can't trust everybody in the Federation. Well, no, I think what happened was they were essentially saying what the information that Spock has in his mind is more important than yeah. Spock. So get that information out of him because we need, we know this is a big deal. Well, like, why couldn't Pike just you know tell the admiral or somebody like, okay, guys, this is the information we have. The universe, you know, the galaxy is going to be destroyed. The Earth is going to be destroyed. This is high priority. Why is that connection not being made? Because they they must feel like they can't really trust the powers that be at this point. They have to do with this by themselves. Well, I, they, they I would know. say they would say that. The knowledge of tomorrow is in Spock's mind, and we need to rip it out to save the universe, to save the galaxy. Yeah. That's what, well, that's what Section 31 was going to do. Right, that's exactly right. And you, and you can justify that. That's not like these are the bad guys twirling their mustache. They're trying to get information to save all sentient life. And then I have another question. If this probe went five centuries into the future, who adjusted it? That's, I that's mean, the what, question we right, don't know yet. Right, who, I think I, I mean, know. Not not the who so Maybe much. Maybe it's all as, machine life. Well, I and that's I why I went to Air Arian because she's she's mostly machine anyway. But what I noticed was that the 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 drone that came back looked like in Spock's vision looked like the ships that were deploying all those, yeah, those it's drone true. explosions. Yeah, true. Similar kind of technology. So obviously this thing, you know, if, if my supposition oh, yeah, is correct. Yeah, yeah. It was part of the bad guy. She's operating. Um, and now she's taken over by yes, the bad guys. Yes, yeah, the, yeah. yeah. She, the, so the, that's like there's clearly a bad guy here, or, mm. or something. It could be a race, or we don't know who it is. Um, and then there was machine, a weird maybe thing. Maybe it's all machine intelligence. It could be. Yeah. Ooh, I kind of like now, that. Now, now check this out. The Borg. D did you guys? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That would be <laughs> sweet. All right, guys. Hmm. Did you get the sense that when Spock was mind melding with the, the Red Angel, that it was Michael? Yes. Because they did this thing with the camera there, yeah, you know. Where they exactly. Kind of, it wouldn't so surprise me at all. She's involved one way or the other, I mean, without, without a doubt. Um, but, I mean, look, they, everything moved forward. Mm -hmm. all, of, all the characters, something good happened where you learn more about all the primary characters. Almost all of them, virtually. And there's a whole subplot line we didn't even talk about between Stamets and the Doctor. Right. Where he, you know, he screwed up. Like, he comes back, he has no feelings, he feels disconnected from... The Doctor does. Yeah, he has his memories, but he's not emotionally connected to them, which neurologically, by the way, is a thing. Whoa, you know, that's you, right. Totally. You, right. Can, you can feel disconnected from, you know, emotionally from your your perceptions or your memories or whatever. So that kind of thing is plausible. Um, and it's interesting, and then and it really does screw people up. It's like I don't feel like I'm supposed to feel, and, and that is very disturbing. Pitting him against uh, T Tyler yeah. was so that was, perfect. That was it didn't scene. occur to me the irony until Tyler's character pointed it out when the doctor said, "You know, I'm not. I don't feel connected or whatever. And I don't he, feel like myself." Yeah. He's like, "Who are you talking? Yeah. Who are you yeah. talking to?" Was, oh my god! It was now, perfect. They share something in common now. Yes. 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 Like they might go to each other for comfort, which I yeah. think is funny. And even the most so, important part of that scene that was the aftermath when you see these floating little robots coming into the into yeah, the that area. That was the most important. It, part. Of course, it was. Like because <laughs> because did you just say what I think you said? Yes, because they're listening to me because they're like they need more robots you in want Star more Trek. High, more robots. High techy tech robots. Yes, yeah. and they did it. Bob, the only <laughs> they're watching the show. Two people are listening to you, and it's me and Steve. All right, <laughs> so I, I have to, I, I can't help but think, my God, you know, like it was this spe the specific writer of this episode made it good. Mm -hmm. That writer, whoever it was, or whatever group of people did that, did a phenomenal job. It was very well and, written episode. And when you compare it to previous episodes, I'm gonna look in and see who did the writing for all the episodes mm -hmm. and see if there's any rhyme or reason yeah. to it. But my gut is telling me that this was, you know, this this, well, per, this person did an exceptional yeah, job at writing. It's an awesome I mean, connection. Think of all the things that happened, you know, without going through the whole list though, but the big things are looping in the Telosians, but also making them not be this, they weren't this epic threat. They really were trying to help, but they needed, they got, they had to get their vig. Yeah, they got their vig. But, you know, they're no longer like at super odds with the Federation. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense with what happens in the original series episode yep. with the Menagerie. It's a good bridge between the Menagerie and the Cage. It ties all those episodes yeah. together. 
I really mean it when I say that, like, when you think of most of the major characters move forward in this episode. Yeah. You know how hard that is to make five, six, seven, ten characters move forward? George O move forward. The captain of Section 31, like, yeah. you know, you get more information about With him. Their relationship. Yeah, yeah, and he got snubbed by the, that council that was they were talking to. That was big time bad yeah. for him. yeah. Spock and, and Michael were just off the chart. And when we, we finally about get, them. we finally have Spock. It's like not yeah. interacting with Spock, right? Of the seeing, real yeah. Spock, not the kind of loopy, timey wimey Spock. Big time with Pike, even with us. I love by the actor is selling it. Oh, he oh, is God, totally selling it. He is by far. He's easily yeah. slipping into the t number. 2.5 of <laughs> all-time captains oh, yeah? for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah? He's Captain Kirk, uh, Picard, Picard, and, and him. I'm, I'm, I love everything mm. about him. Everything. He's, he, he's got it all is what you yeah, need in, he's in fantastic. the seat. All right, so anyway. Who else has progressed? Saru, because Saru will let something pretty aggressive happen. Which yeah. He's an officer, and he should not have let that happen. This is the new Saru. Yeah. And he was, but he was right, I think. No, I mean, he wasn't, Bob. That is not Starfleet. They you don't, don't let, let officers no. fight just to let it play itself out. But, I mean, he had a point <laughs> psychologically. Yeah, but, but yes, that's my point. Not his but, call. But, yeah, but that's not, it's not protocol. Because yeah. what they, you know, I was thinking, how could they have solved that? Let's say that those two people, like, weirdly got into a situation where they needed to, like, have it out. Okay, fine. Do it on the, alone on the holodeck. On the holodeck. Yeah, right. Or, you know, yeah. but don't do it in the middle of, like, 50 people watching. That was not a, a cool thing. So Saru's got something cooking, right? Well, he's lost his fear, right? So this yeah. is the new uh, Predator Yes, Saru. Predator Saru, this man. This is Predator Saru. Right. That's cool. That's and also, that's a little wrinkle. And it, it also was a good plot device to let the fight happen because the fight was dramatic. And it yep. moved their relationship forward. Again, a very expertly written episode. Not just the, it was fun stuff that was happening. Yeah, we got yeah, to look at the well designed. Yeah, yeah. We got to find out who that well right. Even well the bridge crafted, crew. Well crafted episode. I pay close attention to the bridge crew. I, yeah. like, I like seeing characters look at other characters. You know when yeah. the character checks in with another character? Did you hear what the captain just said? <laughs> yeah. that, that type of stuff. Those little moments it, add a lot. Oh God, it's so add important. Yeah. And when I, I don't know the character's name, it's the it's the woman with the red hair that has the damaged yeah. eye. When she cut the captain off and said, "Where do you want us to go?" Yeah, like give me the course. I'll put it in. Like don't even. Which, you know, like, yeah, but the fact know. that you don't know her name, though, because I, I think back, like, on the original series, we knew Sulu and Chekhov. Yeah. We knew all those characters. The, the secondary bridge characters, I don't think they'd be quite connected. No, they're not there yet. They're, they're not, not there yet. They're taking baby steps. We need to connect to them more. We need to connect to them more. And it looks like... No, I won't spoil it for next week until the very no, end. No, no, no spoilers. spoilers. We end. promise. No, we heard you. People no wrote in. Yeah, people wrote in. They don't want us to talk about... Next week. ...about previews. I mean, end of the show. So, you know, like, I would, Tilly again, I love Tilly in this episode. Yeah. She yeah. wasn't, there it was, was the, the appropriate amount of quirkiness. Right. She, she's <laughs> not even, yeah, that's quirky is a good word. It's, it's not, like, come into my office. That was a great, yeah. she leans great over, scene. hair falls But she knows what she's doing. She was acting confident. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't like self degrading in a weird kind of way. Like, and so hopefully they will continue that arc with Tilly because yes. I like where she is now. Yeah. Um, so what overall, it's my favorite episode of all of Star Trek Discovery. That was Could it. Could be. That's, yeah. No, imagine if every episode was that good. Yeah. I was well, sitting on the edge of my seat. That. Right. Think about it from that, those yeah. terms. There was no other episode that I could legitimately say, if if every episode was at that quality, it would be an epic TV show. Well, some of the Lorca episodes at the end of the season. They were good. They were good. But there. still, this thing tied threads together. There was yeah. there was intense writing going so on. So keep it up, Discovery. Yeah, we, please we're do. We're liking it. All right. Yeah. And how many episodes left? This is episode eight. eight I, I, I don't. What are there? Twelve in the season. I keep checking, and like they're, they're I'm not seeing like a. They're not a, saying. What's weird is you're not. I'm not even seeing the names of the future episodes. They're, they're holding those back as well. So I don't think all the information is out. But I mean, we can we can assume there's going to be thirteen to fifteen episodes. So you know, I hope so. we're past the halfway point. Um, so yeah, great job this week, Star Trek Discovery and CBS. I really loved it. And uh, this is Alpha Quadrant 6. You can go to alphaquadrant6.com to see links to our Facebook page, to our YouTube page, to our Patreon. If you enjoy the show, consider becoming a patron. A patron. We, a patron. A patron. Become a patron. Become a patron, not patron. Right? What's, what's yeah, wrong with me tonight? What, I'm, I'm excited, late, Steve. Late. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Alpha Quadrant 6 on here.